What you guys got another video here for you on hard drive encryption and encryption containers and it's all to do with Veracrypt so let's take a look at how we can get all this set up in this video. Now I'll show you all three things that you can do with Veracrypt here which is everything to do with hard drive encryption, uh, your system hard drive encryption and also we'll talk about uh, containers and USB flash drives which you can encrypt as well. So let's uh, get uh, Veracrypt here from their website. Now Veracrypt is used for Windows operating systems, also Linux and also Mac OS. So whatever operating system you've got, you can use uh, this free software to encrypt your drives. So head over to Veracrypt and download which version of software you need for what operating system. Now all of these steps will be exactly the same for every version of operating system. So don't worry about that. So I've selected the Windows 8 and later version for Veracrypt installer and I've downloaded that to my PC. I'm going to go ahead and get this installed on the PC and you should see something like Veracrypt uh, set up. Just accept their terms and conditions, click install and choose where you want to install the actual software. Click OK and then you can see here you can consider donating and then click finish and basically click yes or no depending on whether you want to watch the tutorial on how to use Veracrypt. So this is Veracrypt right here. Looks a little bit complicated but it is pretty straightforward and I'll show you how to set it up. So all of the drive letters here uh, on the left here you've got create volume which we're going to click on because we want to create. So we have three options. I'll show you all three of these options here but let's start off with the create an encrypted file container first. So basically we're going to click on this one and click standard Veracrypt volume. Now you can also create a hidden Veracrypt volume if you wish, but I'm going to do the standard one. Now we need to select our volume location so we can select this here and basically select a file. So click on there. I'm just going to do this on the desktop here. So I've got a folder called en encrypt and inside here we can create a container. Now this can be on a USB flash drive as well, but I'm going to be putting this inside here. So I'm just going to call this test and you can call yours container, whatever you want to do. And that will be my container. Just read all the information. It tells you about USB flash drives can be used as containers and all that good stuff. So you can test it here. And also the encryption algorithm is AES. You can change that as you, if you wish. Uh, to whatever you like i'm going to leave it as is is good enough for what i need and also we have the ash algorithm here which you can change as well i'm going to leave that as is as well now you can test this and benchmark it as well if you wish depending on what you want to do here if you click on test here it does give you some information here you can see encrypt decrypt auto test all and reset as well so you can quickly test this out by clicking on auto test all and you should get self-test all algorithms passed let me click on next here. Now we need to choose our volume size. How much size of container do we want to use? Depending on how much data you've got, I'm just going to do a small megabyte uh, size one here, say 20 megabytes. But if you've got, say, two gigabytes or three gigabytes or 10 gigabytes, you can create that container. Just bear in mind that this will take space from your hard drive. Now you're going to need to give it a volume password. This is for your container password. So people can't get into it and it will be encrypted this is your encryption uh, password here so just give this a good strong password now it's important that you take good note of this password because you will need this to get access to the container now also you can see here there is some other options available up here which is use uh, key files and also display password and also use PIM if you wish you can use any of those options I'm going to leave those off and go next you can see here short passwords are easy to crack use brute force techniques so they are recommending 20 or more characters to be used you can now wiggle your mouse around on your desktop and this will create a random pool of digits as you can see here and characters once you've done this you can click format and this will get this prepared for us the veracrypt volume has been successfully created that's because it's only a very small volume 20 megabytes in size so that is the volume now created here so let me just pull this down and close this off here 
so you can see what it looks like. It's just basically a, a container inside that folder. It's this one here. So inside our encryption folder, you should see a container called test. And this is it. Now you can put stuff inside here. You won't be able to just open it like this. You will need to use Veracrypt to open your container. Now this can also be, as I've said, on an external drive or on a USB flash drive. And that way it can be uh, kept nice and safe. Let's go and open up Veracrypt here and you can see how container. Let's go ahead and mount this container so we can put some data inside here. So to do this, all you need to do here is go into Veracrypt and what you want to do is select a file here. You can see on the right hand side, we've got select a file, select a device. So select a file in this case, because it is a container and we need to go into our location, which is in our encryption here and test and click open. Now we can mount this and you should see it be mounted here. You need to select a drive letter on the side here. So make sure it's not being used. Select that and click mount. And now we need to put in the password that we created for this container. Now, of course, this all can be hidden as well. So no one can see it. If that's what you want to do, you can create this hidden folder or container on your USB flash drive or desktop. Click OK. And this will then go ahead and use your password to verify and open up. You can see it's now been mounted and you can access this. And uh, basically all we need to do here is double click on this and this will open up our container. Let me go ahead and double click on here. And now you can see our container is empty. And now we can just copy some data in here as long as it's no more than 20 megabytes because that's all we created. So make it as big as you need. Okay. It's that simple. So I'm copying some data in here now, just to say this was important documents. We've now got this in our container and basically all we need to do now is dismount and this will then be invisible and people won't be able to go to that container and open it up. Again, if you want to enter it again, you will need to put in your password and click mount and this will give then give you access to that container. So you can see how useful this is. This can be on a USB flash drive with some personal stuff in there. So people, if you ever lost it, people won't be able to get access to it because it's encrypted. And there you go. There's all your data there. Very simple. Okay, so that is the container out of the way. Let's move on to the next one in the list. I wanted to show you all of these because people ask me how to encrypt drives and stuff like that. So this is how you would do it if you don't have BitLocker. So you can use something like Veracrypt for this. So encrypt a non-system partition or drive. So this is useful for external drives, flash drives, and other optional uh, hidden volumes or even partitions. So let's go in there and click on this one. And we can also click on the standard volume or even hidden uh, Veracrypt if we want to select a device this time. And we can now choose a partition of our choice. I've got a little two gigabyte partition here on my drive. So let's click on this and select this one. Click OK. You can see that's now selected. Click Next. So now we have two options. Uh, create an encrypted volume and format that volume or we can encrypt a partition in place already if that's what you want to do. So you can choose either one of these, but I'm going to go to encrypt a partition already in place. You'll get a warning here. I'm going to say yes. And again, once we go to here, you can see here it's asking for password here. Now we need to put a nice strong volume password in here. This will be the password that you're using to gain access to that partition or whatever it is that you're encrypting. So let's go ahead and put in a password. They need to be the same, obviously. And you can use a password generator, a real strong password generator. It'll say the password is too short. And now we can move this around here. So I advise you to use good, strong passwords. Click next here. Now it's going to give us the white mode here. Now, if you're using an SSD, you really don't want to be uh, using three or seven or 35 Gutterman or anything like that. I'm just going to go none for faster, but one uh, should suffice here. Uh, let me just go ahead and click on this. So say yes. And basically that's going to now start to encrypt when I click on encrypt. There we go. Say yes to start this 
process off. It's going to start preparing and away you go. That's starting to encrypt. I've speeded that process up. Now you can mount this just the way we did before when we mounted the container. So if you want to do that, you can do, let me just uh, click OK here. Now, of course, when you mount this, it will be using a different uh, letter other than the one you've just done. So it's not going to be F that you mount. It will be a different letter, even though it's drive F that we have encrypted. Now, of course, you could hide that as well. So let me select this, click OK here and click a different letter. So we're going to use W here and click mount. It's going to ask for our password here and just put our password in like so. And then click OK. And this will give us access to that partition on our computer. There we go. Now we can double click on here and we can copy some data into that location if we wish. This is it here. You can see now it's a partition. So we've got now two gigabytes of space. If you had 10 gigabytes or 20, that could be all inside here. If you go try to click on the drive letter itself, it won't let you uh, because you're, you're literally logging into VeraCrypt via their software. Now we can dismount this if we wish. You can see the drive here. This is the mounted drive. And this is the uh, drive that we've used. Now, of course, you can hide these as I've said before. Okay, so let's move on to the next step, which is just going to dismount that there. And we're going to now go ahead and completely uh, encrypt the whole drive here. So let's go ahead and create a new volume. And we're going to choose the third one here, which is encrypt the system partition and entire drive. You can see normal here, system encryption or hidden if you want to hide it. Now we can uh, encrypt the Windows system partition here or encrypt the whole drive. I'm going to go ahead and encrypt the whole drive and it will tell you all the information here. So take your time and read all of this information. And once you've got this all done, whether you want to do the top one or the second one, it's entirely up to you. Click next, say yes. And now we can start to say yes here again. You can read the information here. I'm not going to read all of this information out. Now we can choose how many operating systems we have. We have a single boot on this machine. If you have multi-boot, you will need to select multi-boot. From here, we've got the encryption options. Again, we can just leave them as is. Give it a password, as we've done already. Let's give this a nice password. I'm going to use the same one just so it's easier. And it's going to say this password is too short. But it's the one that I'm going to use for this tutorial. Got the option here to use a display password or use PIM. Click next. It's saying the password is too short. So let's wiggle this about a bit. Collecting some random data. And now we can go next. Okay, so we've got a key generated here. We can now go next again. Now, I can't stress enough how important this step is, which is to create a rescue disk. It does allow you to create one. I would advise you to create a rescue disk. If you don't and you have problems, you won't be able to recover data. So it's always important to create a rescue disk. And you can see the ISO is there. You will be able to create this. I'm not going to go through this process, but you should literally create a rescue disk for yourself. Rescue disk has been created here. Once we've got that done, we can click on the next button and move on to the next stage. And it's asking us again about the rescue disk. So I'm going to click OK here. It's going to give us the white mode here. So you've got some options again for the white mode. Again, I can't stress enough. Don't overdo this on SSDs because you'll shorten the life of them. So I'm just going to go none for this one. But there's other ones here. Click next. And now system in encryption it just needs to do a pretest so we're going to do a pretest here click ok and it's going to ask us to restart the pc so let's go ahead and do a restart by clicking yes system will start to restart and now you'll get the vericrypt bootloader right here and this is what you're going to see so you need to put in your password to boot up to this system okay so make sure you put the password in if you forget this password you're going to be big in trouble so make sure you have that rescue disk to hand but again we're just going to put our password in push enter and enter again if you've not set this up it will verify your password 
And once it's verified it, it will let you onto the computer. Let's go ahead and do this. Just giving it a bit of time to try and verify our password. And once it verifies it, it will give us the Windows uh, loading screen here. There we go. And now we're just going to boot back up. So remember, this is just our pre-test. Once the pre-test is done, we'll then be able to move on uh, to the full encryption of the drive. So this is just testing. Now we'll just load in. So pre-test is now complete. Now you can hit the encrypt and this will encrypt your drive, the whole drive. Click OK. And this will then start the encryption process. Say so yes here. And there you go. It's starting to encrypt our drive. Now I'm not going to complete this whole process because it does take a bit of time to encrypt the whole drive. So I will speed up this process. But if you want to remove it, basically you go to system here and then permanently decrypt system uh, and basically and partition and click yes. And it will go ahead and start to decrypt that drive. Okay, as if you want to decrypt the drive, that's how you can decrypt it. So that's now done and we're all complete. It will need to restart the system. So I'll quickly restart here. And that's basically it. That is how you can use Vericrypt to completely encrypt all of your drive and all of your data. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Thanks again for watching, guys. Bye for now.